Hey everyone, just want to take the time to welcome everybody back to my channel. Today's lesson is going to be about drawing the human skull. So what I'll do is, over here on the left, I'm going to, or over in the left quadrant, I'm going to do a front view of the human skull, and then on the right, I'm going to do a side view. Now this is for beginners, so I'm not going to be getting into the super nitty-gritty scientific terms of every single bone in the human skull, but the big bony landmarks that you should definitely know. So, first of all, how would you start out actually drawing the skull if you've never done one in your life? We're going to break this up into very simple shapes. What I would do to start off is a sphere. Or, if you want to do an oval, eh, that's okay too. Now, when you start this off, keep your hand loose and draw with your shoulder. I've stated this many times now in my previous videos where you, you want to avoid drawing with your wrist to try to make some big movements. And you want to avoid drawing with your elbow too because you're still going to banana the shape. It's going to look like a kidney. It's going to look like a banana or some kind of football. You definitely don't want to do that. Okay, so once you have that first sphere in, I'm going to darken this up so you can see this a little better on screen. This is going to be a very rough, non-detailed look at the human skull. Once we get this in, I'm going to do my best to split it in half down the middle. Okay, So just use your pinky as a guide or just draw lightly with your the palm, the side of your hand, just very, very lightly rubbing against the paper. So once you split it in half, it's going to look like a circle, and then you're going to see a line down the center. Okay, the next thing to do is figure out the actual angle of the skull based on the jaw bones or mandibles. Okay, and we're going to get into all those names here in a sec. So even if you meet somebody that has very square jaws, they're just genetically gifted with a very strong jawline, you're still going to get a, a decline in there. Okay, it's not going to protrude outwards. So, what I suggest doing is do a, a light angle like this, going inwards. And, okay, and then we're going to go to the other side, and we're going to do the same thing. Now, one of the cool things about drawing skeletons is that you do not have to become one, or the drawing doesn't have to become 100% symmetrical, because we as humans are not. Just look in the mirror, look at your face and go, hey... That eye is different than that eye. I know that my, my right ear is different than my left ear. I don't know how that happened. Maybe I was born like that or growing. I, I don't know. But it's going to happen when you start noticing your face. All right, so once we have this in, different artists will have different methods as to what to put in next. Personally, for me, I like to put in the bottom of the jaw. Okay, so down here, I'm just going to put in the bottom of the jaw. I'm not going all the way across. I'm just going to indicate where the chin is. Okay? Again, like over here will be the mandibles. And then the next thing that I like doing, I'm going to turn my paper just a little bit, is I, I think I should probably make the sphere just a little bigger. I'm going to do this lightly too. Remember what I said in the beginning. This is going to be rough. Okay, You're going to see... Uh, you're going to see lines going over other lines. Maybe I'm I'm fixing the angles in real time, and that's one of the beauties about drawing in general. Now, if you were you're viewing this with my sketchbook turned slightly, okay, because of the camera. So if I turn it like this, so you can see it on uh, directly in front of you, you'll notice that some of these are not equal, and that's okay. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is actually the eye line, okay? So when when we think about the eye sockets, okay, or the orbits, they're not perfect egg shapes. They're not perfect circles. And I think that's where a lot of people get the shape of the eye sockets wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one single horizontal line using my shoulder going across like this. So when you're looking at this beginning stage of drawing the skull, it does not look like a skull. But please, if you're following along, bear with me, do these construction lines because this will pay off if you have some just broad estimate as to where to put these shapes. Okay, the next thing that I would do for me is the line in which both upper and lower teeth are meeting. 
right? And I'm gonna put it right about here. Now, when I say right about, those of you listening are probably expecting some perfect measurement as to where to put this. There is not going to be a per perfect measurement. Remember, we are doing this on the fly and we are trying to, we're trying to give the scenario as if you're sitting in a cafe, an airport, out in a park or whatever, and you're trying to draw this based on reference that you have studied in the past. Okay, because the better you can pull from that mental reference, that mental library that you have built up, the better you're going to get at drawing on the fly. Now, my previous lesson, uh, previous video, you can find the link at the end of this one, is drawing creatures without reference. <laughs> I want to give it a little disclaimer here. It's, it's not wise to draw everything without reference. The reason I made that video is just in case you're first learning how to start out and you want to just invent something on the fly for fun. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back into drawing. Now, this, the shape of the actual eye sockets goes like this. You're going to have the front part or the middle part of the orbital, okay? And then it's going to round off. And the, the funny thing about the human eye is they actually look kind of sad. It's not this super gnarly, ghostly, demonic looking shape, which is actually fun to draw. No, it we look rather sad. And I, I don't know why. That's just the way we evolved. So you're going to have one plane going this way. And then you're going to have the next one kind of sloping downwards like this. Notice how loose I'm keeping everything. And then... As we get to the outer part, we're going to go at an angle down this way. Right here is where the cheekbone is. It's called the uh, zygomatic bone. Okay, it's, I know it's a it's a fun name, but it's the zygoma is it's the zygomatic arch. Okay, so it's better known as the cheekbone. You can feel your zygomatic arch going from your cheek and follow it all the way back until it hits about the min the middle. I can't talk today. That's a blooper. I'm leaving it in. It hits the middle of your ear. All right. Now, once we have this, the eye socket is going to swoop back around and actually go upwards like this. So you're going to see this kind of sloping, droopy look to it. It's kind of cool, but also a little freaky too. And if you want, you can finish each of these angles off with a, st a straight line, like a point, or you can round them. Now, more naturally, it will happen as a rounded shape. All right. So once we have this, here's the next thing that I like to do. This line going across here established the center. Okay, and if I put a little dot right in the center, I know that if I just take my pencil, okay, so I take my thumb, and I look at the very, very tip of my graphite. All right, and I go, hey, where does that cross intersect? in the middle of the head. Go to the intersection with the tip of the graphite, look where the dot is in the center of the eye socket and move your thumb up to it. And there you go. You have the distance from the center where the cross intersects and then the center of the eye. So then you just move it over and then you put another dot right there. So now you know where the center of the other eye socket is. Now, when you measure this and you have the center crisscross and then the center of the eyeball. Make sure that you just move to the left until your thumb hits the center of the cross. That, that's how you know it's equidistant. See what I'm doing here? All right, if you're confused about that, it's easier to just do it yourself on your own sketchbook, look over your sketchbook and draw it so that you can actually see in real time what's happening when you draw these shapes. Now that we have that, again, the reason I'm giving it the, uh, the reason I'm giving this type of lesson for measuring with your thumb and your pen pencil is not everybody carries around a ruler. All right, so self-measurement is a, an actually a pretty cool skill to have. All right, so once we have this, I'm going to try to duplicate these angles that I did in the original eye socket. Now, since I did the first one, the second one, when I mirror it, is going to be a little easier. Again, these don't have to be perfect, okay? Because remember, we are not totally perfect either. There we go. 
See how loose I'm keeping everything. That's the fun part. Keep it loose, keep it free. Don't think too hard about what you're doing, okay? This is called the Nassian, by the way. It's this cool little split. It's kind of like one of the skull sutures. Like We'll, we'll get into all these names too, but the, the suture is like what, like if you look at a skull from side view, it's those ziggy zag lines that look like the skull was melted together. There's all kinds of weird stuff about the skull that most people don't know about. All right, so once we have that, I then like to put in the the nose. Everybody knows what a what a skull nose look like looks like for a human, right? It's it's kind of like a guitar pick. It's kind of like this teardrop shape. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to put that in. It's gonna wide widen out like this. Keep it very light. Now, the cool thing is that sphere that I put in, wherever that comes down like this and it starts to swoop up. This is typically the bottom of the zygomatic bones or the cheekbone. So you kind of know, oh, so that's where I should stop putting the, that nose shape in. So this little bit right here, it's called the anterior nasal spine. So if you put your finger right under your nose, don't pick your nose, if you put it right under your nose, you can feel in the middle between the two nostrils, the skull, like that part, that little lump, that is called the uh, anterior nasal spine. It's pretty cool. The next thing I want to point out is when you start putting in the side of the sockets, make sure that the bone is actually angled outwards like this because it, the, the zygomatic bone, the cheekbone, will come out and will actually protrude outwards like this and then come back in. And then it will swoop down like this. So when you look at the center of the eye socket, all right, and you do a line straight down as such, usually the inner part right here stops right before that line. That line being the center of the eye socket. So we at least know where the top and the bottom teeth are going to rest. Now, this line that I put in when you're biting down, when you look at a skull from straight on, the teeth are not gonna sit perfectly straight. That's, they're actually rounded, okay? That's because this whole part right here is the barrel of the mouth, all right? So it probably wouldn't hurt to start putting in a smaller sphere right here. This is really gonna come in handy when we look at it in side view, because I think one of, the, one of the problems, beginner problems with drawing skulls is that we think our teeth are straight across and they're actually not. There's a lot of roundness happening, which is what ma it makes it beautiful, but at the same time, really complex. All right, so inside here is all kind of fun stuff. You know, this is called the Vomer. Don't ask me where I got it from. That's just the name of it. That's the Vomer. You got the infraorbital margin, middle nasal concha, all good old Latin terms. That's all that crazy cartilage that you feel inside your nose, but in the bone too. There's bone behind the cartilage, so we're not gonna worry about that too much. Those actually will come down like this. I might do some shading too. I might shade those in. You don't want the, the, uh, the nose opening too big or else it'll look kind of funny, so we, we need to be careful. Okay, so we got the Nassian right here. Okay, so once we get this, um, we can then start to indicate, all right, so these, the teeth will actually come up at an angle right about there. Now, one thing that we have to watch out for is that there's actually enough space in between the bottom of the nose opening and then the top of the teeth. So the one thing that I'm noticing right now that I actually I'm correcting on the fly is that I think this line right here was a little too close to the, the nose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna treat this as if it's the top of the teeth instead. So I'm just gonna bring the cheeks down like that. And then the teeth can sit right under it. I still have that nice angle that I drew, but the teeth can sit under it. So that's the middle of the teeth. And then I have the roots of the bottom of the teeth. Now notice how, here I'll turn my sketchbook a little bit. See how it kind of goes up at an angle. It's not going directly across. So you want to avoid the horizontal look for the teeth because look in the mirror right now or soon and bite down. It doesn't matter if you have an overbite, doesn't matter if you have perfect teeth, which I commend you for. 
the, there is a curve to all of it. All right, so now once we have that, here's the tricky part, and this part is easily messed up, and that is the angle in which you put the jaw in. Okay, so these lines that we put down on the side of the skull are very important. Those are light indicators as to what that angle is actually gonna be. Now there's gonna be an opening right here, right in here. I'm just gonna indicate it with a little oval. Now what is that opening? That opening is where you can literally look through the human jaw and see the other side in the back of the head. And I'll get into the anatomy of the back of the head in a second. But once you put this, you can put the jaw in. Okay, so you, you have your zygomatic bone here and the jaw actually sits underneath it. Okay, so you're gonna have this and the teeth on the bottom and the top are gonna sit like this. So you're gonna see it attach. I'm gonna darken it up right like that. That's how they attach. And then once it comes down, you're going to start to see the, the side of the uh, chin, or not chin, I'm sorry, the jaw, right here. Okay, so what is that actually? So that corner down here is just the side of the jaw. That's all you have to worry about. Now, where to put that? One thing I like doing is I like going to the very top of the nose opening and just doing a 45 degree angle going down this way. Very light. Again, if you're looking at your skull right now, just just look at how messy that it could be and be okay with that. We are learning, we're not trying to do any super crazy piece of art. We're not going to be shading. We are just worrying about the shapes and the bony landmarks and how you, you can learn this anatomy quickly. All right, so the 45 degree angle going this way, because it's going to happen again over here. Might as well just draw it. 45 degree angle, come down from the top. Now, here's the other part that could get messed up if you don't pay attention, and that is how far down do you make that jaw? So what happens is the jaw, or the mandible, actually comes down and it flattens off. Now, it's not perfectly flat. Okay, there's no horizontal markings right there. By the way, if you're looking at the skull and you're going, okay, that head is way too small. You're absolutely right, it is too small. We're gonna make that larger at the top. But what happens with the human mandible down here is it comes out from the point, and you can feel this on the side of your jaw too. There's a point there and then it comes down and it rounds off, and there you have it. So there's actually a just a slight little divot right there. I'm gonna re-darken, re-darken or just darken. Yeah, just darken the center line. I'm not gonna worry too much about what's going on on the other side yet, because I wanna get this side finished correctly so that I know I'm mirroring it correctly. Okay, so once I have this, I'm just gonna put an indication. If you're wondering what that little hole is right there, that's called the infraorbital foramen. It's a pretty cool name. It's pretty neat how we, how we have evolved, because there's another one down here. It's called the mental foramen. Not foreman, foramen. Pretty crazy. There's a, there's a there's a need for all of it. I don't I don't even know what it is, but it's kind of cool. That could probably swoop down just a little bit more, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye orbital, just to make it even. Okay, so once I have this, here's another very important factor. Over here, you're gonna have your temporal bone. Okay, so you have your zygomatic bone, and on side view, as I was talking about earlier, you have the zygomatic arch, and that's where your jaw muscle actually fits underneath it, because that bone has to travel all the way back to your ear. But over here, you're gonna see the skull start to come out again. All right, and then it comes out, and then it swoops up. It's not perfectly rounded, no. You're gonna break it up into three different planes on the side. You're gonna have one going up at an angle, and then the other one rounds off this way, and then the third is at the top. And then you can do the same on the other side. Now, I mean, there are eight billion people on this planet. Everybody has a different skull, okay? So not everybody's is going to be angled the same or any of that. 
I'm going to explain what I'm putting in here in a minute. This part actually is part of what the sternocleidomastoid attaches to, and I'll get that I'll get to that in a second on the side view. You're probably wondering what the heck is a sternocleidomastoid? It's the big muscle on your neck on the side that pops out whenever you have to turn your head. And if you turn it too quickly, it sucks if you pull it. It's awful. It's an awful feeling. Okay, so once we have this, we can round this off. Now we're starting to get a pretty cool looking skull here. Okay, so if you're wondering, wait a second, Bobby, how the heck am I actually going to draw the teeth? Okay, so let's get into the very basics. Now I'm not a dentist, okay? But I do know that the shapes of the teeth are as follows. When you split the top barrel of the jaw in half, you're gonna have a slight little gap right there and then you have your first big tooth. So it's right after that split, all right? And then you have tooth number two. Remember, it starts off skinny at the top where the root is, so you can actually do a little line going up on the barrel of the jaw, and then the, the root comes out. You got tooth number three. Again, I am not a dentist, okay? So I'm not gonna be getting into all of them. These three are always the largest. And then you can get a little smaller as it wraps around the back, okay? Usually you can see about four. So I'm just gonna put one, two, three, four lines. That's it. I don't need to think any harder than that. There's no point. Because we're not, we're not doing this to put in gobs and gobs of detail. Remember that. And then the bottom teeth are not going to be as thick, but you wanna honor that split right there. Okay, and we're gonna give it the, this human a slight overbite. All right, so you're gonna have tooth number one, and then you're gonna have tooth number two with the root slightly lower than the first one. Okay, and then on tooth number three, it starts getting thicker and it starts to protrude outwards, starts to roll, and then you can do four, five, six, and the teeth in the very back, like the molars, wisdom teeth, and all that, you can't see at this angle. All right, so just remember that. Part of the skull comes out here where you can see it trying to accommodate for the the teeth roots, tooth roots, teeth roots, however you want to say that. Okay, so just to jump in the eye socket here real quick, everybody knows about how your optic nerves travel into your brain from your eyes, and you're wondering what, where do those cords go? So not to get into too much detail, but the split within the eye right here, there's like that little hole, it actually looks something like this. So I'm gonna shade that in pretty dark I'm going to put in some shading in a little bit just to show you where the sockets are so you don't get them confused the rest of the face. But like right above this area, right, up, right above here, it's called the sphenoid. Okay, so that's a sphenoid bone, better known as the lesser wing. All right, so we got that. And then we have some really cool little markings over here because essentially, you know, I could put some hatching in here. You know what all that is on the inside. It looks kind of funny, but that's what happens when you view it with just lines. Because then when you start shading it in, you're going, oh, that's right, there's like more shading under the eye socket. You know, because up here is the uh, super orbital margin. It's that flat part. It's almost like a chamfer on a car. This is the super orbital margin up here. Um, if you want to have some fun, discovering things about your own skull, put your your finger right up here and it feels like part of the bone is chipped. It's so weird, man. It's the frontal, what is that called? Uh, hold on a sec, uh, frontal incisure. Yeah, it's so strange. There we go. And then obviously up here is just the frontal bone. So this right, the whole place up here is called your brow ridge. And when we view this in side view, you're gonna see that more people have a protruding brow ridge than others. Uh, it, it just comes from our Neanderthal days, like how we evolved uh, humans two, three, four hundred thousand years ago, plus we had way bigger foreheads and, and it has shrunk over time. But some people, some races and everything, we have kept that brow ridge. It's more prominent than others. Okay, so we're just gonna make that side of the head here pretty prominent. Right back here is where the 
parietal bone is, and you'll be able to see that a lot more in a sec. Okay, and now, now the fun part is just to mimic everything that I put. Now, there's not a lot of detail over here. It's just enough so you can actually understand what's going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll over some of the lines that I've drawn. It's gonna be very loosely done. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna try to make it believable. All right, and then a lot of these shapes, when I bring them over to the other side, you're really gonna see a, a sense of completeness. You're gonna have some, uh, some pleasure in knowing that, hey, if I measured everything cor correctly on one side, it should look pretty good on the other side. It, it's not always the case. It doesn't always work like that, but most of the time it does. All right. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna indicate with very basic lines where everything is on the other side that I drew. Now, it looks like this human has a very narrow face, which is, which is okay. You kind of, like being a creature designer slash character designer, you kind of get away with imperfections when it comes to organic designing with creatures and characters because we are not symmetrical. We're not machine parts, okay? We're not Terminator. Well, the T-800 or whatever you want to call us. We're just bones. We're just meat, bones, cartilage, you know, fat, muscle, and we evolve however we evolve. Sometimes it's different shapes. There's eight, eight billion of us on the planet. All right, uh, I'm not gonna get into details about what's actually going on in the nose, but essentially this is how you draw the front view, guys. So hopefully you learned something on that, but we're not done. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide right over here to the right, and we're actually gonna do the side view. So. Let's jump into it. The front view that I did draw, to lower stress levels as much as possible, I'm not going to be drawing this exact skull in side view. I'm just gonna be drawing a new one, like a new different human, I guess you could say, over here on the right. Um, I'm gonna work with the space that I have here. Now, the way that I would start this sketch mimics how I would start the front view, and that is with the, the largest shapes first. And when you think about a side view, you obviously think about the cranium. So I'm gonna draw an oval. So remember what I stated in the, in the front view here, and that is there are many different planes to the human skull, so it's not a perfect egg shape, but this will at least give you a ballpark to start with. <clears throat> After this, and here's where d people might mess up first thing, and that is, like if you look up here in a little doodle that I'll do, they think that jaws go down like this at a 90 degree angle, okay? You have your, your skull here and the jaw goes down and then the front of the face goes up and then there's the eye socket. That's probably one of the worst things that you, that you should do. Instead, think about the jawline as an angle, okay? So I'm gonna go at an angle like this. Again, these are construction lines, these are just guides there are going to be bumps and ridges and adjustments as I move on. But essentially, it's gonna come down at an angle and then the bottom is gonna be at an angle also. And then we're gonna shoot back like this. Okay, and this is just to start things off. Again, there's gonna be adjustments, we're gonna put eye sockets in and all of that fun stuff. So, what would I put in first in order to start the skull drawing? Me personally, I would probably put in the eye socket first, just because me being a creature designer and the lessons that I have given, if I put in the eyes first, it helps me dictate where other things go because I can base my measurements off of that. So then what I'll do is I'll just put in the eye. Uh, again, there's a, there's a droopy factor going on with the eye. Now, the bone here on the side, you're gonna think about the supraorbital foramen. Okay, so that's the very top of the eye right here. It's gonna look like a fish hook. Once you do that, you're going to come back and you're gonna swoop that almost, it almost looks like a teardrop. Okay, so you're gonna swoop that right back here and think about the planes that we did in front view. Okay, so you got the superorbital foramen up here and then there's a roundness and then it comes down. There's another round section and then it flattens off, 
right here where the cheek is. So we're going to try to mimic that as we go in the side view also. So let's take, let's take this part, flatten it, round it off, and then flatten it again as it comes up. And in side view, it's going to look a little strange, but bear with me here because you're going to have something that looks like this. You got the lacrimal bone. So the, what happens is when you look at it from side view and you got your, your eyeball right here, but behind that in the inner side, it's called the caruncula. Yes, it is. It's your tear duct. You can feel the, the caruncula if you put your finger in between or right here, you pinch your eyeball right there, you can see the tear duct. All right. So this right here is called the lacrimal bone. There is a bone in here. All right. And then the caruncula sits in between that. So these don't necessarily connect, okay, because the, the front of the head is going to look something like this. This is where that brow ridge starts, okay, and then you flatten off here, and then you round off to the back of the head. So it, I might be drawing off of the page. That's okay, because the back of the skull, I can, I can show you maybe in a little doodle down here, where it's a smaller version of it. But essentially you have... The front part here, okay, you have the uh, the lacrimal bone that sits right in there. So it's, it's pretty cool. We're, we're amazing creatures. I, uh, it's so complex, and I, I'm still amazed at what we look like as humans. Even when we look at us in, like, skeletal form, and then you tendons and muscles, it's, it's just crazy. Okay, so then where do we go next? Well, we just think about that nasal bone. Okay, so the nasal bone comes out at about a 45 degree angle, it doesn't have to be perfect. It comes out at about a 45 degree angle, and then it stops. And now you're gonna see it come down like this. So you're gonna get some nice gestural lines in there. Don't overcommit on these lines yet. Keep everything loose. Don't make anything tidy. Because remember that, you know, that little dot right there, that little hole, the infraorbital foramen, which is that cool little thing that we have there. I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I have no idea why we have that. I don't, maybe those of you that study evolution, please tell me what that is in the comments. Maybe it's it's like something for our, the cheekbones, or I'm sorry, the muscles in our face. Please correct me, I have no idea. All right, so now we're gonna come in here. And then we're gonna start to look at the barrel of the mouth. This part is so cool. The other thing that I have to be careful with, and it, it's the the actual shape of that nasal cavity right there. Okay, so I might have to bring that up a little bit because the eye socket is a little larger than that opening. So I'm just gonna round off the bottom. So you see what I did there to overcorrect. I had the original line almost drooping too far, and I kind of rounded it off on the top. So I just brought it up some, and there we go. Because remember, right down here, you got your zygomatic bone, you got your zygomatic arch, and I'll show you where to put that in a second. But let's start thinking about that, the barrel of the mouth. I'm just gonna put an egg shape right in there. Right like that. Now, this jaw, this isn't the bottom of the jaw. This is just the angle in which I need to draw it at. Remember that. It's like whenever I, whenever I draw the angle for the teeth, it's always the middle of the teeth. So you have to, you have to accommodate for that by putting in the actual teeth above it and below it. So these are all just measurement lines for angles, and nothing more. Once I put that in and I start to see that oval take shape, I know that the maxilla will come out. So this part's called the maxilla. You know, that's where all the teeth roots show. Tooth roots, teeth roots, whatever, roots. All right, so once we have that, then we have the teeth. So I'm just gonna indicate very lightly where those teeth are. And then remember guys and girls that it's not straight across for the teeth. Okay, so we can, we can experiment here. We can put in a slight little smile because it does kind of look like skull smile. It's so odd, but it, it's true. All right, because this part's very important. Uh, where the teeth come out, 
So I'm just going to put an indication of where the, the roots begin and the maxilla ends. Right there. So we can see it from front view. Now, the bottom is going to come back. Remember, we have that sphere drawn in there. So the bottom teeth and the top teeth are going to kind of poke out like this. And then you have the mandible, which swoops right back out. It's so cool. This is why skulls are so much fun to draw, because there's a lot of powerful angles to make the shapes of our skulls look so intimidating. Like wide jaws, um, just the teeth are really creepy looking. And now I could see why on all those forensic file movies, or I'm sorry, television shows, when they find like skulls in the woods and stuff, it's like, yeah, it would be freaky, even though we know what skulls look like. Okay, so now that we have that, we'll put in a line of where the bottom teeth roots will grow into the mandible. Okay, we're going to have to put in that little mental foramen. All right, once we have this, now we can start to think about where are we going to put that zygomatic bone? Okay, so the zygomatic bone, if you were to look at the bottom of the nasal cavity right here, usually a good indication is it goes straight back. All right, and then the jawbone will look something like this. Okay, the zygomatic bone comes across. This is the zygomatic arch, because it's literally an arch. And then it comes up to eye socket, right, like that. Pretty cool, so we're gonna need a lot more space back here. I'm just gonna draw the head, because it's not, it's not gonna get back there. Okay, so I, I've already determined that we, are, we don't have enough room back there, and that's, that's fine. We'll work with what we have. All right, so once we have that, and then we have the, uh, what's that What's that called? Oh, zygomatic arch right here. Because right, be like right below the zygomatic arch, you're going to see two things. One, the hinge of the jaw right there. So it's going to come out. It's going to come at an angle. Remember the angle that I drew earlier, that angle? I'm going to follow that angle. And then the second thing that comes out of that zygomatic arch is called the external acoustic meatus, or the meatus, however you want to pronounce that. It's, it's literally where your ear hole is. Got that. And you have these really cool, this is your temple. Okay, so you, that's, that's where the, the jaw muscle comes out so we can actually move our jaw up and down. Big, big jaw muscles. All right, in a very odd place on our skull, is right here. It's called the temporal bone or, or the mastoid process. So you're probably wondering, what the heck is the mastoid process? The mastoid process is where the sternocleidomastoid actually attaches. So if you look at somebody's neck and the muscle comes down like this, so you have like your, your chin and then you have your trachea right here. You got that huge muscle on the side. That right there is your mastoid process. The sternocleidomastoid attaches to that. Now if you put your fingers back there, you can actually feel the big bump behind your ears of the skull, that's what the muscle attaches to. So like for me, mine protrude more than other people. Some people, you can't really feel it much. It's just, it's just a matter of like what kind of neck you have and you know, your genetic makeup, but it's cool nonetheless. Okay. So once we have that, let's, let's start thinking about the bottom of the skull here. So like right here, you're going to have the bottom of the skull roll, roll down. Sorry we ran out of room. Because <laughs> like right here is the, it's called the squamous suture, so you can just, let's make some scribbles. Remember, this is beginner, guys. Okay, so I think I was talking while my video cut off, <laughs> so I'm going to have to backtrack a little bit. I, I have to talk about the sutures that we just put in the skull. Okay, so the suture that we put across here, that really crazy split that we see on the side view of the skull, is called the squamous suture. So it's kind of like a rainbow arc, okay? Um, this all right here is called the temporal bone. It's that big area right in there. Okay, so you have your uh, zygomatic arch right there to help accommodate our jaw hinge, our, you know, our uh, external acoustic meatus, meatus, however you want to pronounce that. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then up here is a, a crazy little intersection we have. So the suture that kind of comes across here, it's not completely vertical. 
That's called the coronal suture. And then as it comes down, it splits this in half. Okay, you have this little section right in here. All right, right there, right there. That one is called the sphenoparietal suture, and then directly to the left after the split, that is called the sphenofrontal suture. Okay, so you got the sphenofrontal, sphenoparietal, you got the coronal, and then you have the squamous. Yeah, pretty cool Latin names. You got your brow ridge over here. Okay, so this was a, a very, very crude, rough way to draw the human skull. So we're gonna look at both of the views here. A lot of fun. And really, try to get as many anatomy books as you can. I'll list some in the description below, anatomy books that I love using, both for 3D artists if you're sculpting, and 2D artists if you just wanna sketch these out. Cause I mean, it's it's the same thing. You know, they're, they're structures that you have to learn how to sculpt, see in 3D, draw, etc. Um, I do, I do hope that you picked up at least a better understanding of how to make our skulls. Now, the male and female skull is identical. The, obviously, the, the biggest difference is the female skull is slightly more slender in the places where the human or the, the male skull is a little bit more jagged and pronounced, okay? If you slim those up, study images like that, you can Google all of this stuff. But this is how I would make a, a very, very rough line drawing of the skull. And we could jump into some crazy detail and really go out. And as a matter of fact, I might do that in a later lesson just because skulls are so much fun to draw. But the better you get at these, the better you get at creatures, vice versa. They, they, they play hand in hand. Okay, thanks everybody. Please join our Discord too, because if you join our Discord, Creature Design Workshop, show your personal work, but also we go over a lot of artistic practices and skills. People show their stuff. It's a bustling community. People are joining every day. It's a lot of fun. So please join our Discord. Check out the link in the description, and uh, I'll see you all in the next lesson. See ya.